Egypt's new leader, Gamal Abdel Nasser, pledged radical reform. There were six principles to put an end to uh, colonialism, to put an end to feudalism, put an end to uh, corrupted uh, of uh, uh, exploitation by capitalism. The international company of Suez Canal is renationalized as an Egyptian joint stock company. The Arab world is a loose yet complex amalgamation of 22 countries in which a pan-Arab identity is the proclaimed ideal. Its citizens share a common language, a common history, and believe that they share a common destiny. But in its search for unity, Arab society has been pulled in opposite directions, past versus present, sacred versus secular, monarchy versus democracy. By the late 1950s, Egypt's president Jamal Abdel Nasser was the Arab world's most powerful and influential leader. His political victories had impressed and inspired the Arabs, giving a new meaning to Arab nationalism. But Nasser's success begged the question, does unity need a collective effort or could the Arab nation be built by a single leader? In 1958, a political power struggle erupted in Syria. Fearing their country might be divided, a group of Syrian politicians and army officers asked Abdel Nasser to unite Egypt with Syria. He accepted reluctantly, but on his terms. Two presidents, Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt and Shukri al Kawatli of Syria, meet to make history in Cairo with the federation of their two states into one, the United Arab Republic. The news electrified the entire Middle East. In Cairo, cheering throngs followed the two leaders through the streets exultantly. The Al Hazar Mosque is the scene of prayers for the new union, which has already invited all Arab states to join. One, Yemen, is expected to bid for inclusion. The new state numbers 30 million, largest in the Middle East. Nasser has set vast forces in motion with this act. The effect on the precariously balanced Middle East, no one today can prophesy. The rest of the world, America, Russia, Israel, all remain cautiously quiet, awaiting the events that will follow on Gamal Nasser's moment of triumph. In 1963, Nasser launched yet another attempt at unification, this time with the Ba'athists in Syria and Iraq. But discussions soon showed the differences between the three nations. The union never took place.
During the latter part of 1962, Nasser attempted another union, this time with Yemen. When a military coup overthrew the Yemeni royalist government, Nasser intervened militarily to support the new Republican government against the Saudi-backed royalists, pushing Yemen into civil war. This attempt at federation would fare no better than the Syrian one. Nasser's intervention also increased into Arab tensions, parting the Arabs into two camps, traditional pro-Western monarchies versus those influenced by his revolution. 